guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk. And today we're going to talk about Bad Things by R.K. Lilly. And let me just discuss the cover for a second. Favorite cover. I have now bought it in physical copy. It's in the mail. I'm in love with this cover. This is a standalone, contrary to popular belief. This does have characters that are mentioned in the Up in the Air series. My personal recommendation would be to read this before you get into the Up in the Air series. I mean, either way is fine, but in Grounded the Third in the Up in the Air series book, there is a slight spoiler to their relationship, Danica and Tristan. So I would recommend reading this first. The thing is, chronologically, this happens before the Up in the Air series books. This book is one of my new all-time favorites. I mean, R.K. Lily has some serious talent, I am telling you. I can only aspire to that knowing that I never could get to that. Just the plot things that she thinks of I never would think of. Miss Lady got some talent, that's what she has. And I'm now done gushing and going to give you guys a summary of this, the non-spoiler section first, and then I will warn you when I want to talk details. So Danica's kind of like the living babysitter, dog walker, cooker, gardener, whatever you want to call it, that's her and she loves her job. She loves the two boys that she watches. So then the husband that she works for is known for bringing in guys and rock bands and letting them crash at their place. And his wife, Bev, is so opposed to that kind of thing. Danica, trying to cover for Jerry, just out of the goodness of her heart, covers for him when he brings this guy, Tristan, in. And he is trouble with a capital T. I loved the description of him when we first saw him, in love with that. He is tatted up, he is this really big, extremely handsome guy with the dimples, because we fall for those every time. And so she covers for Jerry by saying that Tristan is one of her friends that she knew from school. They slowly get this relationship. I mean, they were bantering right off the top. It was funny as hell. They are best friends before anything else, and they try very hard not to be that more than friends line because Danica only does relationships and Tristan doesn't do relationships. He does casual, so they have that disagreement there. I mean, they're obviously attracted to each other, but they try to resist against that. And it really reminds me of Travis and Abby's relationship, though this is more of an adult-er version. Um, there's definitely more sex, there is definitely more adult content and drinking and such, but it reminds me of that. It's reminiscent to me of Beautiful Disaster. Danica's the kind of person that has a problem living in the moment. She's always thinking about the future, and I can so empathize with that because that is exactly how I am. She's 21 years old and sometimes acts like she's 81 years old. It's really hard to break out of that kind of mindset, but Tristan really does that for her, and he takes her out of that and helps her to live in the moment. And they go to clubs every night and they are just inseparable, and they become best friends so quickly, and he's supposed to only stay there for a little while, and it turns into more, and it is so fucking witty and funny, and I love the damn banter in this. I'm gonna read you a couple things just to show you. You are being a tease. I'd recommend you stop playing that game with me. Is that a threat? It is. Don't start a war you can't win, my friend. In the battle of teases, I would whip your slutty ass, you sex fiend. Tristan is the kind of guy that takes everything as a challenge. You dare him to do something, he will do it. And so that makes for a definitely a funny story. And without wanting to give much more away, I'm going to enter the spoiler section, so if you haven't read it, I really recommend you do. It is a lighter read, for the most part. There was about 25 different times where it was horribly embarrassing to read. And for her to have written it so well so many times, like, talent. Plenty of awkward scenes. I will see you guys later next time on Bookworms Talk when you have read it. See you next time. Bye! The nickname Boo, and then he called her Pudding, and he called her Sweetheart, and then, oh my god, his nickname was funny. Trist, with the Y, means he's a man whore. I just got a big kick out of that, and then Jared's nickname was Diet T. I just got way too big of a kick out of these nicknames in here, but it just, it led to the funniness of everything. I love that Danica had these times, a couple times, when she would say, my favorite thing about him, and this, I think, by far, was my favorite thing of Tristan. I thought that might have been my favorite thing of all about Tristan, that we could talk forever about everything, about nothing. There was never an awkward silence to be found. I think you all know by now that my number one thing that just earned so many points is that when they hold your hair back while you're puking, um, that is incredibly sweet. It earned you so many points on my scale. And like I said with the whole comparing it to the Beautiful Disaster books, I think what was just the icing on the cake, and it's not a bad thing, it's totally fun, and I'm sure there are more books out there, I just haven't ran across them, but the icing on the cake was the list. He made a the friends don't list. 
because I like you too much to sleep with you. Okay guys, um, that vibrator scene, I died like the eighth time. I'm not even at the halfway point because he walked in and then called her on that. And then the other vibrator scene was when he actually helped her. I just am not desynthesized to that kind of thing quite yet. So because Tristan went out with some random girl, then Danica decides as revenge to go out with his brother. I'm like, that is totally different. And so then Tristan shows up unexpectedly and then talks to her. And then the next morning, he kind of apologizes for being such an ass. And then they have that fool scene. And he kind of made the deal. He's just like, I want to go down on you. And then that's just going to be that. Friends can do that for each other, can't they? Because before she said how other guys had never gotten her off, he took that as a challenge. But the simple rule of he just goes down on her and then that's it quickly broke. And I mean, that list that they made before went to the wind. And then they had sex and then he asked her for control because she was very controlling the first time. And he's like, I want you out of your own head. And then after their sex marathons, she tells him about what happened with her mom and the foster home and then the man that touched her and made the deal that if you, I'll, if you let me touch you and you don't say anything and you're quiet and you're a good girl, I won't do that to your sister because she's younger. And I actually like her more. He told her sister the same thing. And then her sister walked in on him screwing her. And that is why she hasn't talked to her sister since. And that just fucking disgusted me. Oh my god, and then after that, Tristan would ask. He's just like, I want to be rough, and I need to ask you, is that okay? Are you okay with that? It was really sweet. And then things continue to go smoothly until Tristan says, who says having a fuck buddy is a bad idea? Why'd you have to open your mouth, Tristan? Why? And then Danica thinks it's the best thing to follow up that kind of statement with an argument and then to say that she loves him. You're fooling yourself if you don't think I have feelings for you, Tristan. I've fallen in love with you. And then he says, bullshit. He's like, oh, I heard you. I just don't believe you. I just wanted to strangle them. And I mean, they have the argument of the century here. He's like, you always do committed relationships. You never have sex without love. Do you know how mechanical that makes you sound when you say those things? And then she goes there. She goes to the place that she never should have gone that was way too low. And she says, you think you're so perfect because you tell women the score and they love you anyway. Do you think your dad was any different from you? Do you think your mother named you after him because he was a bastard? He was probably just like you, just as charming, just as fun, just as irresistible, your worst nightmares to become your dad. That was so low. And then they didn't talk for weeks. And then when she goes to decadence and then afterward, he kind of drags her up onto the rooftop in the rain and she's almost saying what he's saying. Yeah, we should just go back to being just friends. And he's just like, how can you forget what we have? And you said you were in love with me. Do you really expect me to fucking forget that? Oh my God, and then the boys, I have to read you this part. So they kiss in front of the boys. And then Matt says, was his tongue in your mouth, boo? Matt asked, sounding disgusted. Does this mean you're going to have a baby? Ivan asked, sounding more disgusted. Did you just give each other cooties? Matt asked, sounding less disgusted and more fascinated at that possibility. Do you have to get married now? That was an entirely hilarious scene. So they're at Decadence and Tristan's band is performing and then Danica goes up into like the mosh pity kind of area with Frankie. And then some guy gets up behind her and is groping her and Tristan sees that, flips shit, jumps off the stage and beats this guy's ass. And then James comes in and does damage control. But that was just the beginning of the downhill slope because right before I read that scene, I went back and grounded and I was like, I just want to read. They said it was in here. I vaguely remember the name Tristan. I had to go back and read what that was about because I had forgotten a certain thing that I'm not going to tell you because it's slightly spoilery. I'm trying not to make that the same thing for you guys. But after I read that part and grounded, I was, I just felt dread. And then Tristan goes on another rampage and beats the shit out of Patrick. And then they have another argument from hell. Tristan has never exactly worn his heart on his sleeve and he's never really told her how he feels for her. He says, I need you and I miss you and stuff like that. But he's never told her the three words that she's wanted to hear. He's like, love is just a word. I don't say it back because I don't fucking believe you. When I hear you say I love you, what I hear is you keeping score and I'm not playing that game with you. There is no score for me. There never was. And then he goes to say, you think you love me, but you're in love with being in love. And then he says, I thought you loved me. Taking it back so soon, or is this it then? Have you built up enough of a case to walk away yet? Because I haven't said three fucking words to you that you've taken the meaning out of. And I mean, this was such an awful fight. Tristan Vega rivals that of Gabriel Emerson in the groveling department. I see now that I didn't know a thing about love before I met you. When it's right, like it is with us, it doesn't make your life harder. It makes your life better, even when it's hard. 
I've never been so happy as I've been with you and I don't know how to begin to get past that. And then he goes on to say how I love your smile, your honesty, your loyalty. I love your sarcastic sense of humor and the way your eyes light up when you're giving me shit. I may just love that the most. And then they're brought together under the most unthinkable circumstances. His younger brother Jared had died of a heart attack because of drugs. And he gets Frankie to bring Danica there. And when she finds out, she hadn't been answering her phone because she just kept thinking it's always Tristan, it's always Tristan. And then she's looked at her phone now on the way over to his house and she sees that there are missed calls from Jared weeks from before and that they were so wrapped up in their own depression after the relationship ended that they didn't pay attention to Jared. And she goes to him and he says, I told you that I needed you, but now I need you to survive forever. I won't live through this without you and I'm selfish for telling you that, but it's the truth. You're my rock, Danica. I can't ever lose you or I'll follow Jared. I know I will. The instability of that just ate at me. But then probably my favorite chunk of meaningfulness in this book, and he's talking about love. I hated that you had a word for this, a word made cheap by using it on other men and then throwing it in my face like that should convince me to say it back. I don't have a word for this because I've never felt this before, but I do love you. I just wish there was a way to explain to you that love is just the start of it because it's turned into so much more for me. And for someone who doesn't exactly wear his heart on his sleeve, that was a seriously huge moment for Tristan. And without getting into the details of that funeral because I'm trying to conserve my makeup, cry like a baby. The poem, cried like a baby. I was mad at his mother though. Let me say that because Tristan was right when he finally cracked at her and he said, well, it is your fault you were encouraging this. And I understand that she's just feeling hurt and that's why she's blaming Tristan for this and that's why he blamed her for this. But reality is she's more at fault than Tristan is. Oh, that made me so mad. And then I read the next chapter to rock bottom and all I feel is dread going into that book. I want to read it so bad, don't get me wrong, but all I feel is dread because I am really concerned about finding out what happens in Grounded because you have to remember that in the order of things, it's bad things in flight, mile high, rock bottom, and then Grounded because there's a two year period between there because of his magic show thing, that's how I figured that math out, I'm pretty sure. So I'm really nervous about that. If you guys have any information on the release date for Rock Bottom, let me know in the comments because I'm actually waiting that. I want you to tell me all your favorite bantery, funny parts, all the parts that you remember the most, and I will see you guys later next time on Bookworms Talk. Bye. And then he says, hello. I'm filming still. Oh yeah. I have. I was gonna scare you and then I like peeked in and you were filming. Stop beeping. Stop beeping. I went back and grounded and I was like, I just want to read. They said it was in here. I vaguely remember the name Tristan. I had to go back and read what that was about because I had forgotten the whole limp thing. But after I read that part in grounded, I was I just felt dread absolute dread because I'm thinking what happens that is so bad for her to walk away from him what is that bad and then for it to have been his fault and after all the emotions that she said in this book because she kept repeating how I would never be the one to willingly walk away and it was just a knife to the gut every time I heard it from this point on